first thing we want to do is to um, sort of pick up and finish um, where we were on the chapter three slides, and then that will lead us into the 941. So I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we ended up last Thursday looking at um, uh, taking OSDI and HI from people's paychecks, and specifically what to do when somebody has what? So it's easy, like, I make $42,000 a year. Could you tell me in one algebraic phrase on your paper how much my FICA is? Do that. I make $42,000 a year. What's my FICA? you're going to do is very um, quickly, hopefully, take 42,000 times what? 0.0765, and you're going to tell me it's $3,213, right? Because I didn't tap. Super easy. Could you tell me really, um, you can't do it in one algebraic formula, but you can do it in two algebraic formulas. Can you tell me what my FICA is if I make $142,000? And I think I'm locked up here too. Unfortunate. Hundred and forty two thousand, what's my FICA? How are you gonna easily calculate that? Anybody else get $9,406? Okay. Right? Because I pay 7.65% up to what? 118.5. And then the amount over 118.5, I only pay 1.45% on. Okay? So pretty straightforward. If I told you I made 242000 I'm not going to make you calculate it and I'm single, you would do the same kind of calculation you just did for the 142, but you would also have to do what? You'd also have to add on that 0.9% for the difference between 200 and 242, right? Okay, so, oh, this computer is going to make me a little crazy today. I can see that. Um, well, I guess we're just going to have to be patient, and I'm going to have to reboot this. So I'm going to put something, oh, maybe, uh, so where we left off on Thursday was taking a look at calculating the paycheck where the person does what? Where they find? Where they actually cap, right? So what's, uh, what was the trick there? So if I told you back to that I make $142,000, um, I'm paid biweekly, 
What's the next thing you need to know in order to make the calculation? 142,000, go ahead. Yes, exactly. You've got to calculate something called my prior year-to-date gross, right? In other words, what had I made before today? And then we can make the calculation for the FICA. So I think I did one example, and then I asked you to practice the second one. Did everybody get a chance to get through the second one? Yes or no? I Okay, you, you were okay with it? I tried to do it. Okay, well, the answers were there. So if you, did you understand how to figure out, the key is, is that you've got to figure out um, how much up to the cap of 118.5, students will have a tendency to figure out how much the paycheck went over it. I don't care about that, do I? I only tax the amount up to um, the cap. I certainly hope this is not what this is going to look like all day. So I think we left off. Um, at the next one. Is it just my computer? Or is everybody's going super slow? Anybody been working on the machines today? Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be manageable. So this was the one I asked you to do on your own. Um, Sambit earns $225,000 a year. He's paid monthly. Determine FICA for the November 30th payroll. So implicit in this is that he's paid how many times already this year? How many times? Ten. Right, because he's paid monthly, and I'm telling you I'm running payroll on November 30th, so, um, you know, logically, just kind of backing into it, you can say, well, he's been paid 10 times this year, right? So you take 225 divided by 12 times 10, and that would give you his prior year-to-date gross. So he's already earned this, hasn't he? So what do I have to do really quickly, just one calculation, how would I figure out what his FICA is on his uh, $18,750 paycheck? What am I going to multiply by? Is he capped? Oh, no. Yeah. He's yeah. only capped. So what do I multiply by? 0. 0.0145. Now let's move on to a different situation. Oh. Uh, okay, but he's not over. Oh, he is a little bit going over 200,000 on this one, isn't he? Right. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So he'd earned 187.5 before today. Plus 18750 today is throwing him over the 200000 in addition, isn't it? So it's going to throw him up to 206250 So $6,250 of this paycheck is in excess of two hundred grand. So that's going to get hit with the .009. Okay, so you've got to be very careful here. It's kind of an interesting dichotomy with the 118.5 cap. You have to figure out the amount up to 1185, don't you? The 200,000 isn't a cap, that's a base. So you have to figure out the amount over it. Are you with me? So you got the 18750 from the 187500 minus the 187750. I got the 187500 because he's paid this much oh, every paycheck. Okay. And he paid he was paid 10 times before right. today's paycheck, so he was at 187.5 coming into today. Right, okay. Does everyone see these numbers? Please ask if you're confused about anything. Because if you're feeling confused now, believe me, it's not going to get clearer unless you clarify. How many paychecks he was paid before today? 
And I figured that out, like, I, I figured that out in this case because we're running November 30th paycheck and he's on monthly, um, uh, uh, he's on monthly payroll. So that means he was paid the 30th of each month in the Okay. So 10 months. I think in the example on Thursday, he was semi-monthly, right? Or she or whatever. And I told you that she was paid on the 15th and the 30th of each month, which is different from, say, the 1st and the 15th, right? So I've got to tell you the pay sheet. Everyone see that? You have to know that in order to figure the prior year-to-date gross. Okay, so next concept. What it, what's SECA again? What does that stand for? Self-employed. Yeah, Self-Employed Contribution Act. And what's the percentage there? How much am I paying on my self-employment? 15.3%. Until I get up to what? 118.5. Same thing, right? What if I have both self-employment income and a paycheck? Do they each count separately towards the 118.5 or do you add them together? What do you think? I think you do add them together. 118.5 is the total tax. So say I had a job for 100000 and I had self-employment income of fifty. My job is going to take the full what percentage of my $100,000 W-2? No. Not 15.3, because it's my W-2. Go ahead. My W-2 for hundred grand. what percentage of that has been taken up towards FICA? 7.65%. But now I'm telling you I'm making another 50000 of self-employment income. Can I just take that 50000 times 15.3%? Why not? You're shaking your head no. Yeah, because 100 plus 50 is going to do what? Put me over 118.5. Stick with me here. So of that 50000 how much of it is susceptible to HI? All of it. There's no cap for HI, is there? What percentage of that 50000 is going to be paid into HI? 2.9. 1.45 plus 1.45. How much of that 50000 is going to be susceptible to OAFCI? <coughs> Only the 18.5, right? The difference between the hundred and the tax. What percentage is going to be paid into OAFCI? Close. 12.4. Okay. 6.2 plus 6.2. You with me? So it gets a little more complicated, doesn't it? So let's try a couple examples of that. Um, first off, just a couple little facts here. Uh, say you've got like a tiny little business like you do some, I don't know, Arbonne or something, or you do a little, one little gig on the side, you make two or three hundred bucks. You don't have to pay FICA on that. You don't pay FICA until your net earnings exceed four hundred bucks for a year. Secondly, and this is critical, I know it's kind of, kind of, it seems like a kind of advanced tax concept, but this is really important. So net earnings, pretty straightforward, like I'm a sole proprietor, I've got a tax business, and I make 10 grand in gross earnings, and I pay 6,000 for supplies and software and my home office space, so what am I going to get taxed on? 10 grand in receipts, 6 grand in expenses. 4000 bucks is my net earnings, right? I'm a sole proprietor, super easy, right? But what if I'm in a partnership with Mallory, and I do taxes, and she does consulting? Same exact tax up. We made ten grand in receipts. We have six grand in expenses, but we're 50-50 partners. Okay? So at the end of the year, we're like, oh, great, we made four grand. But we don't take the money out. We just 
decided to leave it in the business because we're trying to get to the point where we might buy a piece of land and build a little building for our business. So we're keeping all the cash in the business. Does that matter? Whether I take the cash or not does not matter. I'll still, we can still pay back. Okay, are you with me? But the IRS doesn't care what you do with the cash. And we chose to leave it in the bank account because we're trying to get the 40 grand to pay, make a down payment on a piece of land. They don't care. It was still earnings. It's still taxable. So now we've each got to come up with whatever, 600 some odd dollars each, or no, I'm sorry, 300 some odd dollars each to pay our FICA on the money that we earned but didn't take out. Okay, that's a tough one to explain to clients. They're like, I didn't take it. I'm like, yeah, but you earned it. They don't care what you did with it. Okay. And you know these numbers, right? 12.4 plus 2.9 equals 15.3 plus 0.9 if you get to 2 or 250. Yeah? All right, let's try an example. Okay. 118,768. Just write these facts down. W2 equals 118,768. And we'll, we'll just abbreviate it, call it SE income, capital S, capital E, and that's what we actually say in the business world too. SE income means self employment income of 14,500. And my question to you is how much is. FICA on her self-employment income. Her W-2 was what, what was that, 118.768, and her SE income is 14.5. How much is FICA on her SE income? Really only need one algebraic formula, don't you? Colin, you're shaking your head, yep. What did you multiply by what? Yep. And go ahead and write that down, please. I always want when I ask you to work something, I want you to actually put it in your notes, the act act of writing it out and labeling it as a pedagogical tool. So your logic should have gone something like this. Am I worried about a cap? Yep. Am I going to straddle the cap with my self-employment income? Nope. Because I've already earned it. I've already paid the maximum, haven't I? So I'm not going to have to worry about that. So what tax do I owe on the 114.5? Or the 14.5, sorry. Yeah, both shares of Medicare, 1.45 plus 1.45. The last thing that you need to roll through your head is, do I have to worry about the actual or the additional 0.9? No. I don't get 200 or 250. So again, just walking through the logic, first thing I'm looking at is, hey, am I going to straddle the cap with my self-employment income? Nope. So do I have to worry about OASDI at all? Nope. Do I still worry about HI? Sure. How many shares? Two. I'm employee and employer. Do I go over the 200? Nope. So it's really just one formula, isn't it? Okay, so this guy, you can write this down. Go ahead. No, the employer always withholds according to your W-2. So that's your base and then your 
based on your earnings, aren't they? Okay, next fact set, write these down. W-2 is 68, $68,250. $68,250. W-2 is $68,250. My SE income, self-employment income, is 94,500. This will illustrate just what you're asking, John. My SE income is 94,500. My question is, how much do I owe on that 94,500? So my employer's taking the full amount out of my W-2, haven't they? So now the question is, what do I owe the IRS? Not income tax, but just my FICA and FICA on that 94,500. Are they going to straddle the cap? Yay or nay? Yeah. figure out how much of the 94.5 is taxed for OESVI and how much of the 94.5 is taxed for HI. It's the first piece of math you need to do. Figure out how much of it took him up to 118. Very good. How much of it took him up to 118.5? So how much has he already paid FICA on? 68.250. Yeah. So therefore... Is susceptible to FICA, yeah? Or I'm sorry, to OASDI. Right, because I only pay up to here, and I've already paid up to here on my paycheck. 
which is what your question was, I think. Uh, how do I figure out how this, it all came out of here, and now I just need to figure out what I got to pay out of here. What percentage? How much? What percentage? 12.4. I'm doing OASDI here, right? Not the whole thing. Okay, that's going to get me my OASDI. Now, Alec, what else do I have to worry about paying? Yeah, which is what percentage is that going to be? Yes, sir. And how much am I paying that on? Full amount. Very good. Do I get over 200? No. So basically, this is what I just put up here. The 50,250 is taxed at 12.4, right? And the 94.5 is taxed at uh, the full 2.9. Question? So the paycheck is taken care of by the employer. employer. My question was, how much does Craven pay on his SE? Good question. The employer took care of everything out of here, didn't they? That's I mean, when I tell you W-2, that means he worked for someone. W That's a non-issue for me. Do I have to worry about that working for the university, or do I just know they take out what they need to take out? Right? But I have to calculate every quarter from my consulting and tax income, how much do I owe the IRS? Well, I've got to do this calculation, and can I just send them, can I just send them that and feel like I'm covered? Is that 89.7150? Is that all? No, you also have to pay what on it? What are the four taxes an employee pays? OASDI, HI, FIT, and SIT. I still got to pay federal income tax and state income tax. So all of a sudden you thought maybe you were making 20 grand of self-employment income. Not so much. Maybe closer to 11. Right? So I've got a question for you. Go ahead. How do you know that you're going to, do you just add the 94,500 to the 68, yeah. 250? Yeah, and yeah, then you yeah, really yeah, sure. In the first example, this guy, we did the same thing. We looked it up, but we were already over with the W-2. If I told you my W-2 was 20 and my self-employment income was 30, what would you say? I make 20 at my job and I make 30 as self-employed. I'm responsible for the 30, but I don't have any issues with what? The, the W-2. I don't have any issues with the W-2, but neither do I have any issues with taxing, right? Because right. I'm only making fi oh. Montana, this is Missoula. That's a pretty good situation you got if you're making 50. But um, you, you're only making 50, so you don't have to worry about that cap, do you? Right. So I would just take the 30,000 times what? Fifteen point three percent. Okay. Okay. So um, moving now into so we've talked about a couple things. We talked about how you calculate FICA. We talked about FICA with tips. We talked about the difference between reported and allocated tips. We talked about SECA. Self-employment. We talked about what happens if you have SECA and a W-2. And now you've got to push pull all this together. And as an employer, if I'm taking money from your paychecks, what am I going to have to do with it eventually? 
I'm going to have to give it to the IRS, right? Because it's your tax money. I'm holding out of your paycheck. So anything I withhold from your paycheck, on my financial statements, what is that going to show up as? Asset, revenue, liability, expense, or equity. If I take money out of your paycheck, that's got to show up as what on my financials? A liability. Obviously, I can't take money out of your paycheck unless I'm going to pay it to someone. I owe it to someone else, right? Otherwise, I should be paying it to you. All right, so what do I do with that money? That's what we're starting to look at now. Okay. Couple new forms. You need to know both of these. If you're starting as a new employer, or like I'm a sole proprietor, if I decided I wanted to incorporate, I would fill out something called an SS4 and get an EIN. And I know we talk in acronyms, but you need to know that. An SS4 and an EIN. An EIN is really like a social security number for a business the same number of digits, but only one dash. And it's a unique number. You have it your whole business life. You use it for your income taxes, your payroll taxes, your fiduciary taxes. And if you are a person and you need a social security card, uh, you're going to fill out an SS5. And anymore, like when I was a kid, you didn't get your first social security card until you got your first job. Now you go home with the hospital from the hospital with a uh, SS5 form to fill out because you can't take your kid as a dependent on your income tax return unless they've got a social security number. So it was a big deal like when I was a little when I was a kid. You go down to social security office and get your first card, that means you got your first job. Now everybody just has them their whole lives, don't they? Okay, but you need to know these two forms. How do you get them? Okay, first thing, now we're talking about depositing taxes. How do I get your money to the IRS? The first thing you have to know is that FICA and FIT always go together. And the way that I have my students say this is FICA, FICA, FIT. So you remember to double FICA. So when you deposit your federal taxes, it's FICA, FICA, FIT. You guys all work for me. I'm going to take your share of FICA. I'm going to match it with my share of FICA and all the fit I took from your paychecks, and I'm going to deposit them together. Okay. You absolutely irrevocably need to know this. You need to know this. So I'm going to try and make sense of it. This is the kind of stuff if you don't know it and you go to work for somebody and you're late making payroll deposits, he or she's going to get hit with a big fine and you're going to feel real bad. Extra bad if you lose your job. My first um, job in grad school at a CPA firm, I screwed up one of their major clients and made their payroll tax deposit three or four days late. But it was a big, it was a medical clinic and they had a big payroll and the client was like 1800 bucks a client. Of course, the CPA firm had to pay it. And then they're looking at me like, tell me again why you're valuable to me? You know, you just cost me 1800 bucks. So this is very important. What it says is that everybody has, there's potential to have different deposit rules. In other words, say you guys all work for me and I pay you each 20 bucks an hour. Um, the IRS is going to want me to deposit taxes under a different schedule than if I'm a, a single man shop uh, doing bike repairs and I've got a kid that comes after school and helps me tune bikes. Versus the University of Montana that runs a $5 million payroll. We're all going to have different deposit rules. Okay? How does that work? Every November the IRS runs a big old long list of everybody's EINs. And then they go and they look at what their prior year's performance looked like. In other words, what was your gross payroll? What were your payroll taxes? And then they tell them you're one of two things. You're either a monthly depositor or you're a semi-weekly depositor. But there's two exceptions to that. These are, the big, these are the two major categories, but there's two exceptions. If you're monthly, basically you're like pretty small. 
they're going to say, uh, you only need to deposit once a month, and anything that's due, like right now we're in February, all the payrolls you run in February, all the taxes you take out, that's due the 15th of March. Okay, so if you're monthly, it's due by the 15th of the next month. And they're letting you hold on to the money for kind of a long time, aren't they? Because you're not that big. If you're pretty big, like I just described, you guys all work for me. I've got 14 people working full time, making 20 bucks an hour. Uh, 20 times 40, 800 times 12. So I've got a $10,000 payroll. I probably owe 2,800 bucks every time I owe payroll, run payroll. Okay, they want that money right away. They don't want me to hold on to that for a whole month, do they? So then, if when they go on the look back period, they write me a letter or send me a digital letter, and they say, hey. You're semi-weekly. So if you run payroll on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, you've only got till the next Wednesday to get it to me. And if you physically run your payroll on a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, you need to get it to the bank by Friday or to the IRS. And most people now do electronic transfers to the IRS. In the old days, you get coupons, and then each was in line at the bank for the teller. You gave them the money and the check, and they stamped it. You went home and filed it. Okay, now it's all digital. So are you clear on these? You don't get to decide. They tell you. And then these are the rules, and you got to follow them. Except for two situations. You're really big or you're really small. If you're really big, like the university or community medical center, or, you know, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation or something, and you owe $100,000 or more of FICA, FICA, FIP for one payroll, you've got 24 hours to get it in the bank. Then you don't get to wait until that next Wednesday or Friday. You've got to get it in the bank manana. Okay? 24 hours to get it to the IRS. Yeah, they don't want you holding on to that money. The university runs payroll. They probably owe a million bucks in payroll taxes. IRS is like, I want that money. You don't get to use it for five more days and earn interest off of it. I want it in the bank. Good money management. Or the other exception, you're really small. You're so small, you're my guy that has the bike shop and has a high school kid come three afternoons a week to you know, tune bikes with me. I run a $150 a week payroll. I make my taxes are 50 bucks. Then I'm I'm so small. I don't think I put that up. I'll have to write that. Up. So this is this is important. I don't know why that's not on the slide. So if you're so big, you've only got 24 hours. If you're so small that you owe less than 2,500 bucks in a quarter. And remind me, what are the two major types of depositors? You can either be told that you're plus or plus. Monthly. Monthly. Or, or semi-weekly. Okay. So the first exception is if you're really big. And how does the IRS define really big? A hundred thousand of what? Payroll or payroll taxes? Payroll taxes. Payroll taxes. Then you've got what? If you're small, really small. It means that your payroll taxes, okay, and I need to specify this. This is payroll taxes for one payroll. This is payroll taxes for the entire quarter. Your payroll taxes 
taxes for the entire quarter, and how many months are in a quarter? Three, right? Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, the four quarters. The whole quarter, you don't even get to 2,500 bucks. You just hold on to your taxes and you send it to the IRS when you do the 941, which is the name of the tax return we're going to practice right now. Okay? So you just, you don't deposit. You just wait and send with the 941. Okay. You absolutely 110% need to know these rules. And basically, if your situation doesn't change from year to year, like your payroll, you don't, you don't, you're not going to change. I mean, if you're monthly, not what you're one day, you're not going to wake up and be huge, right? You're going to stay monthly or semi-weekly. Okay. All right, we got to kind of get going here. So, um... How do you deposit? I'm going to let you kind of look at the rest of these on your own. You deposit, uh, you know, electronically. This you need to know. It's called EFTPS, um, Electronic Federal Tax Payment System. Where does it say that? Electronic Federal Tax Payment System. And that's how you pay your taxes to the IRS. Okay, so how do we report to the IRS? We fill out a Form 941. How often do you fill them out? If you've got the return sitting in front of you, what does the title of the thing say? Employees Quarterly Federal Tax Return, right? So they're due four times a year, and they're due the month following the end of the quarter on the last day. So, right now we're in February, right, which is the first quarter. What's the end of the first quarter? What's the date? March 331. That return is due April 30th. The second quarter ends on what? 630. That tax return is due, that should say the 31st, I think there's 31 days in July, isn't there? The third quarter ends on September 30th, that's due 1031. And the fourth quarter ends on 1231, and that's due Jan 31 of the next year. Those are the due dates of the 941s. We got our forms here, right? Isn't that where we went? IRS.gov. And for you, those of you that are doing your tax returns on your own, this is where you get them. That's where you get your forms. Here's a picture of it. All this says, and then we're going to go through it, all this says is if you're one of those people I just talked about who didn't get to 2500 bucks all year, you're going to fill out something called a 941B, which is just a little voucher because you need to send money to the IRS with your tax return. Everybody else should have deposited what they owed during the quarter. This is just a reconciliation to show the IRS, hey, this is what I was supposed to do, and this is what I did. One more time. Uh, on a 941 or on income taxes? A 941, you should be even, Stephen, unless you're so small that you're paying with the tax return. And then you can e-file it. And the way that you do that is you get a pen and go onto a piece of software and blah, blah, blah. I mean, everything's pretty much electronic. Now, in all of your software, you guys, your QuickBooks, your Quicken, your, uh, your Peachtree, your MS90, all the software programs are going to electronically file all of your tax returns. We're doing them manually in here because you've got to be able to check if they're correct or not. People are like, why do I have to do this? Okay, 
I need you to look through the rest of these slides. Basically, it just goes through all the different penalties if you screw up. <laughs> you just want to do everything on time, make your payments on time, file your tax returns on time, make sure that you give your people their W-2s on time, don't write bad checks, all the stuff you would imagine that you would want to do. Okay, let's get out our 941. Let's take a look at a payroll register. This is posted um, on Moodle, obviously. Where's my view? Let's blow this up. Can everybody in the back row see this, or do I need to zoom in? Can you guys see it, the numbers? Zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Okay. So what I've got here is a payroll uh, register for my drugstore. So fill out the top of your 941. Pretty straightforward. You don't have the address. But I tell you... Um, uh, you know, here's my payroll. I tell you it's the second quarter. Um, I give you the FEIN. FEIN is the same as an EIN. Um, you don't have the address. I'm going to, while you're doing that, um, find a 941 myself to bring up here. So Banner Drugstore. Where is that at? Where is what at? The register? It's on Moodle, I think, in that first section. Okay, so once you get the once you get that kind of top filled in. Well, you don't have an address right now, but you would obviously put it in. Yep. Okay, line one. Huh? You can't see this? I can't see the page. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know what to do. Can you put your phone on it? The light on your phone? Do you have a, a phone light? <laughs> My eyes are about in that same shape. I'm not quite there yet. Um... Okay, so, yeah, I don't know what to do, because if I turn on the light, we're not going to be able to probably see this. Okay, so, then we're just going to start kind of reading down the lines. The first line, I think, asks for number of employees. And you can see how many employees I have. <laughs> I've had people do that. Do you not have a phone? Yeah, you've got a flashlight on your phone. Okay, second line. Uh, it, it, help me out here because I'm still trying to bring up my, my 941. Is it line two that asks for wages and other compensation? Okay. How am I going to figure that out? I'm telling you here how many paychecks there were in April, May, and June. It's a weekly payroll register. You should be able to take the data up here and convert it to line two. I'll give you a couple seconds to figure that out. You want me to help you find this? Oh, you don't? Yeah, I don't know. My kids put everything on my phone, so I'm sure they probably did that for me. <laughs> okay, how many times was I paid this quarter? Thirteen, right? I'm weekly, so I've got to tell you that. Thirteen times. And gross paycheck, which number am I multiplying by thirteen? Twenty-two oh nine. Do you have it? Do you have one? Okay, well, sh th so roll it for him. That's your, you know, is it? No. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh. I'm not trying to stress you out. I just want you to think about it. Yeah, it is the gross wages. 
And is it just regular or is it regular plus overtime? Yeah, it's everything. Okay, obviously this isn't particularly realistic in that you're not going to have the same overtime every paycheck, but we're just for the sake of academics assuming that. So if you're sitting there, 2209. Your gross pay. Nope, just that. Because it's in there, the overtime's in there. Right? Oh. Regular plus OT is gross. And if it's like monthly, I wouldn't have to tell you how many times I paid because that's pretty much what you did. That's three. If it was semi monthly, how many times would you multiply by? Weekly and bi-weekly, I have to tell you how many paychecks there are because that can vacillate between quarters. Okay. Okay. So go ahead, get your number or whatever 2209 times 13 is and plug that in. 28717. From the number of paychecks in the in the quarter, because I pay weekly, you can't just assume twelve, can you? No. Was that line two again? Sorry. Okay. Line three asks for what? Okay. How am I going to get the amount for line three? Go ahead and figure that out. Federal income tax, thank you. Uh, federal income tax withheld from wages, tips, and other compensation. Now, am I adding SIP in FIP or is it just FIP? Just FIP. Just FIP. Make sure you understand what I'm telling you. You do not ever put state taxes on a federal tax form. 162, 2106, right? So you're subtracting the 162 from the 2209. What does line 3 say? Federal income tax withheld from wages. That's it. That's your fit. 162. That's it. That's it. Did I get the wrong number? 162 times 13, line 3. Yeah, because it's a quarterly report, right? Okay, now we're on 5A through 5D. And then there's a couple columns, right? Oh my gosh, this is so slow. It would make me crazy to work with this. Okay, 5A, column 1, taxable Social Security wages. Social Security wages are OESDI wages. What do you have to watch out for here? Does anybody cap? Does anybody cap when they're making between 480 and 500 bucks a week and we're in the second quarter? No. What if some of these guys were making five grand a week? Would you need to run some numbers and figure out if someone had capped? Heck yeah, but honestly, and for the exam, I'm going to keep it really straightforward. I just want you to be able to do an easy 941. These can get pretty dang complicated pretty quick. Figure out the OSDI wages and carry the math across. Then go down to line 5D, sorry, 5C. Figure it out. You've already got the number in front of you. Carry the math across, and you guys should just Follow the instructions and meet me down at line 10. You're just reading the form and following the instructions. You will have no entry on lines 5B or 5D.
taxable Social Security wages. I've got no tips, so that's a non-issue. I've got no additional Medicare. That means past the 200 grand, so that's a non-issue. Okay, so can you guys see these numbers or do I need to make them bigger yet? Yeah. Okay, now. Hold on, maybe that'll help too. So, just based on what we have here so far, what is the total amount of fits for the quarter? What's the total amount of fits for the quarter, Colin? Shaz, what's the total amount of both shares of FICA for the quarter? Uh, what we have at the number. Right here, isn't it? 439370, both shares of FICA. Because we multiplied this by 12.4, so that's both shares of foot tax. Mallory up here, this 28717, and I multiplied by 0.124, that's both shares of what? John, what's this 832.79? Both shares of Medicare. 1.45 plus 1.45. So this, Daniel, is what? My total what? For both parties, right? Line six, I believe, then asks us to go ahead and total everything up and just follow the instructions. Line two plus line 5E, plus uh, line 5F. And we're not going to have any 5F. That's a, you don't even know what that is. <coughs> so 
Sorry. <clears throat> that was up here. That was my FIT, Kelsey, that I had taken out of one paycheck. But how many times did I pay in the quarter? Got to look down here. How many paychecks were there? Okay. If it was just monthly, you would just multiply by three, right? Okay. Now, then just go ahead. We're not going to worry about line seven, eight, or nine. Just go right down to line ten. Just follow the instructions right on the form. It says add lines 3, 5E, and 5F. So I would say to you that that is all my what? FICA, FICA, FIT, right? And you're basically done with the first page. Now, what's your next question? Okay, I've, this didn't get changed on, there's a typo on this. What's your next question? Line 11. Mm, what does line 11 ask for? Oh, sorry. No, oh, total deposit. Okay, don't look at your screen. It's, I'm sorry, I just had these retyped and that was a typo. She missed that. Or I messed up on the other. I've got to tell you the deposit. So, I did. Or don't look at your screen. Look up here, please. I've got to tell you the deposit. I'll repost this so you don't get confused if you try and work it on your own. So enter that. No, 6,500. Good grief. I'm a mess. My deposits were 6,500. Where did you get that number? I have to give it to you. I have to tell you. All the information up here, you guys, I have to give you. I've got to give you the payroll register. I've got to tell you how much my deposits were. I've got to tell you what quarter we are. I've got to tell you how many paychecks there were. And then once I do that, you can do all this. So then... Do I do anything if it's within a dollar? No. So I am not going to enter anything on line 13 and tell them to please send me 30 cents. I am going to draw a line. Uh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to flip the paper. Okay. Okay. Don't forget to put their name on the top of the second page, please. And then it asks, in the first box, will you go ahead and read that? Number 14, which of those boxes do you think you're going to check? Go ahead and just read the instructions there and tell me what you think. Am I a really big or a really small guy? Over 100,000 or under 25? No. Nope. So then what do I have to tell you? I have to tell you whether I'm a monthly, I guess I need to do that too, or a semi-weekly depositor. What do they ask me to do if I'm monthly?
They want to know how much I owed each month. Why, are, why do they want to know that? And then they're going to go compare it to what I deposited and make sure I did it on a timely basis. Are you guys with me? So we're on the back page on part 14. And I'm checking that second box that says you were a monthly scheduled depositor. Enter your tax liability for each month. And then you'll see, if you look at month one, month two, month three, what do those amounts have to equal? It tells you. It should equal the amount you came up with on the first page. Yeah, it says total must equal line 10. So fill in line 10, the amount on line 10. How much did I owe? Sixty-four ninety-nine seventy, right? Okay. Last dilemma. How do I figure out how much I owed each month? One month I had five paychecks, and two months I have four paychecks, right? How are you going to figure out? Well, we'll start anybody that. How are you going to figure out how much I owe for one paycheck? FICA, FICA, FIT for one paycheck. Something over 52. I've got the payroll register up here for one week. FICA, FICA, FIT. Sitting right there in front of you guys. FICA, FICA, FIT for one paycheck. You have it. You have the that's sit. Oh, that's don't sit. get near the sit. Sorry, but you have the one. But you have those two together. Yeah, add the FICA plus the FICA plus the FIT, and that's what you owe for one paycheck, right? Employee plus employer plus FIT. So you do one fifty eight ninety nine twice. Yeah, FICA okay. FICA FIT. Right. And that's for one. one that's one paycheck. But what they want on the second page is how much you owed for a month. Well, then you times it by four. Depending upon which month you're right. on, right? Right. What box is that? April, there were four checks. May, there were five checks. June, there were four checks. So we're trying to get these three months to tally to 64.99.70. Mm. And I tell you how many checks were written each month. And if you can figure out how much you owe for one paycheck, you should be able to fill in those boxes. And I think what you're going to find is you're going to have a couple cents uh, rounding here. Just plug it in the last month and make it work. Because you know that you've got to come to So then just make it round and make it work. I know that I've got to come to whatever line 10 is. And then if I add those numbers up, 
They're over by four cents, so just knock this guy down, make it round, take four cents off of him. I don't care where you do the rounding, doesn't matter. Shouldn't you just make the two four paycheck ones the same and then whatever's left over the five? I don't care how you do it. Just make sure that totals to line 10. That's why you plug that number in first. And then you go down and you sign it in part four. I'm sorry. Part five, if you're a paid preparer, you got to tell the IRS all your goodies. Did you figure out how much you owe from one paycheck? Yeah. And then, okay. Yeah, great. So how many paychecks are in month one? Yeah. So you did that 199.98.4, right? Okay. Who well, else needs help? Kelsey's question was like, oh, we've got some of these lines missing. We'll read them. Current adjustment per fraction of a cent for a prior quarter. I don't even know what the heck that is. Okay. Let's go and look. There's a second tab right here for another payroll register. And we've got about five minutes for you to get started. And I'll kind of just, um, if you have a question on how to get started, let me know. So here I am. This time, how often am I paying? Bi weekly. Okay, bi weekly. No, what am I saying? That's bi monthly. I did not do a very good job editing this. No, bi-weekly, every other week. Yeah, 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 that's right, bi-weekly, every other week. Okay. Um, and here's the paychecks. And I tell you my deposits, and I tell you what quarter it is, and I tell you the FEIN. So go ahead, and I'm going to give you about five minutes to get started here. And then you should have this finished by Thursday along with your homework, okay? And then we'll spend all day Thursday going over this and looking at any questions you might have from the review for the test next Tuesday. It is, but I've got to repost it because there was a problem on that first file. It's in the first section, Carlos. 